Hey love muffins, it's Keisha, aka Color Me Pink, and I am here with this week's All Tea All Shade Power Book 2, Ghost Season 3, Episode 2 Review. Let's get right into it. So this week's episode starts off with us seeing Lauren, honey, waking up from the nightmare of how Effie tried to unalive her child. So we find out that Effie knocked her out inside of the car and then pushed her into like a lake or whatever and was intending on her drowning. But what she didn't realize was that somebody, some white man was out walking his dog child in the middle of the night and saw the car, called the cops and they was able to save her. So everybody thinks that she is unalive. She is sick of being in hiding. She wants to call her mama and them. But Jenny won't allow her because Jenny needs her help with trying to pin this on Effie and Brayden and she now suspects that Tyreek might have been in on it as well and when she shows her a picture of Tyreek you know Lauren you know kind of like swallows or whatever because there's feelings still there she still you know loves him or whatever the case may be and I think that she does not want to believe that Tyreek could do something like that to her so we shall see what happens with that. But once again, like I could have dealt without Lauren coming back, honestly, truly, but it ain't my show. So Tariq, Kane and Effie and Brayden meet at the warehouse and decide how they're going to, you know, divvy up Noma's product to sell in different areas around town. Brayden was like, you know, we can hit up the country clubs and all of this. But he also brings up them pushing the weight at Weston Holdings, but Tariq shuts it down because he was like, dude, you just be the case. <laughs> like, calm your white self down. Like, you want to be Nino Brown so bad, sir. Simmer down. Okay, this is not menace to society. All right. This is not good fellas, Braden. All right. Calm down, Braden. Calm down. But in this case, he does need to listen to Braden because actually it's a genius idea and they'll be able to get rid of the weight faster but you know Tyreek think he head honcho head in charge you know what I'm saying everybody got to fall in line of what Tariq wants to do so after that we see Davis going over to Monanum house to give her the information on Zeke's case and tells her that the authorities have no leads but believe that his um unaliver <laughs> was after Mecca and Zeke and that the person used a 45 caliber you know pow pow to do it and she was like well what is that gonna do like I need for you to find out who did this to my son because I'm sit sick of sitting here every day watching Judge Judy and Judge Mathis Judge Mathis is about to go off the air I ain't gonna have nothing else to watch Davis fix it <laughs> So he's scary on out because I low-key think he's scared of Monet, child. I'm scared of Monet. And I must say that I, I don't know what it is about uh, Mary J. Blige acting this season. But for some reason, it seems like her acting has gotten better. I don't know if it's because of the stage that she is in her life right now where everything is just good for her, you know. But she's just, I don't know. I, I enjoy her acting more this season for some reason. Is it just me? Y'all let me know down below in the comment section. Do y'all see a difference? We then see Tate at his campaign office and Stephen Ott comes to visit him and basically let him know that his numbers are in the toilet, honey. And he needs to like court younger voters. He needs to, you know, get money for the campaign and he needs to find a wife. So he was like, you know, I got several, you know, chicks that I'm looking at, you know, that he's shopping around to be his boo thing, you know, but his, it's obvious that his heart lies with Keisha Sharp's character. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. Are they going to end up together? But once she finds out how corrupt he is, will she not be able to handle it? Or will she be a down chick you know what I'm saying to be able to ride with it I really want to see her character stay around and I think that she would be good for him um especially if she you know some rider types you know time you know if she down with it you know what I'm saying I would like to see that happen and like to see that pop off so Brayden ends up setting up one of the interns at his job for disrespecting Kiki and he was lazy and didn't want to do nothing no way so he get the dude fired by planting ed evidence on him and 
baby that's all he had to do for miss kiki kiki was hot and ready then honey she served that coochie up to him like she was a hot and ready pizza from little caesar's <laughs> and brayden was all for it so now he didn't got him some chocolate honey he didn't got him some chocolate you know once you go black you never go back all right so Tariq goes to tate's office Thinking that, you know, he about to be the new intern. You know, he about to get this gig, get his course credit and everything. But <laughs> lo and behold, Bruchandria is there, honey, and has taken his spot. So Tariq is like, what's going on? Like, Tate, I thought you was going to hook me up. I need this course credit. And he was basically like, you know, you bad for business. Like, your name's still bad on these streets. And I need somebody that's going to help me in this campaign. And so after that... Tariq don't know what he gonna do and once again he back at square one and Brayden was like I got you I'm gonna get you an internship at Weston Holdings and he was like dude your daddy do not F with me like that is not gonna happen and Brayden was like I handle it my uncle um Luke I'm sure he'll you know want to hire you on as an intern like trust me I got it so Tariq is a little hesitant but he was like I ain't got nothing to lose let's go ahead and do it so then we see Lorenzo at the crib and he tell Kane that he ain't moving none of uh, Noma's product. Like y'all can do it, but I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> My name is Lorenzo Tejada. Okay. And I still wear Kooji sweaters. You got me messed up. So, uh, Kane was like, you know, Drew ain't ready for this. He ain't around. He ain't keeping you up to date on what's going on. He ain't ready. And the daddy, like, once again, you're not going to tell me how I'm about to run my business. And by the way, I ain't forgot that you and Mecca was trying to set me up to take me out. Yeah, homeboy. I ain't forgot. Uh-huh. He was like, so you need to find who is Zeke's unaliver. And then maybe, just maybe then, I'll sit down and entertain a conversation with you. Until then... Little Nick, get out of my face, okay? And, of course, Kane runs off to do exactly what his daddy want him to do because he wants his approval so, so bad. So, we then see Everett inviting Drew to his signing party. I'm sick of Everett. I need for Everett to be unalive, to be shipped off overseas to go play basketball or something because his character is annoying. He's still not ready to come out the closet. He don't even look like no basketball player. Like, the casting on his character was not good at all. They should have had him playing for, like, a rugby team <laughs> or the female soccer team or something because he is not giving NBA basketball player, okay? And Drew was like, you know, my family need me. And he was like, your family always need you. Like, I need you to be there for me. Like, he acting like a real housewife of New Jersey. And he just irks. Because all he do is whine and complain. And all Drew do is running behind him, begging and pleading. Like, oh, my God, can you please listen to a Mary J. Blige album and simmer down? Evelyn from last season pops up over to the Tejada's house to give her condolences and bring over a casserole. I think it was like a tuna casserole or something like that. And she looked like she might make a little nice green bean casserole. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she just tells Monet she's here for her because she understands, you know, when the funeral is over, people stop, you know, stopping by. And she just want to let her know that, you know, she's here for her if she need anything. And she even offers her a stack of money because that's what she did for her when she needed her. And Monet was receptive to it. And I think moving forward, she might find a friend in Evelyn because I feel like they cut from the same cloth. And I want to see more of her character anyway. Uh, be fleshed out so I think that we're gonna see a budding friendship and maybe even a working friendship between Evelyn and Monet Brayden tells Effie that they need to tell Tariq what they did to Lauren and she was like absolutely not the secret gonna stay between me and you because if you find out that ain't gonna make him trust us anymore that's gonna make him untrust us fool and I was like yeah it is and we don't need a rift between them like we had between Tommy and Ghost towards the end we don't need that I need for Brayden and Tariq to stay on the same accord so after that Kane is in like this warehouse or wherever 
torturing the pilot of uh mecca's plane and i think it was like a, a security guard or a driver some black guy that was there as well and he's like torturing him to give him information on what happened that night at first they trying to play dumb like they don't know what was going on but he was putting a blowtorch to them and i was like oh that's a good torture tax i need to put that in like one of my books so the pilot ended up admitting that he saw a bald man with a dark jacket with a, a wide lapel like a wide uh collar that night and then the black guy was like um I just saw him getting into a car with a busted tail light. So when he said bald head with a wide collar, <laughs> uh, K should have knew right then and there that was his country tail daddy. <laughs> Cause he the only person that's still wearing like Averix and FUBU. <laughs> So bring, uh, after that, we see Diana borrowing books from Celine because she can't afford them, you know, because her, her daddy only paying for, you know, her tuition and everything. And he ended up getting her a job at the candy store off campus. But on her first day, she see Tariq and Effie come in and here she go running and hiding in the closet and stuff because she feel, still feels some type of way about Tariq. And. For a minute there, before that scene, I was like, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We're about to go into this season, and Diana not about to be in her feelings about this little dude anymore. Like, she about to move on. Even though I don't like Celine, because his character just looked whack to me. I wish they would have found somebody a little bit better looking. Casting is very important to me. Like, if you want people to, like, go up and, like, fall for couples and ship them, like, casting is important. And the guy that they got playing him, his acting is great. But appearance-wise, he just not doing it for me and he's just not a good opponent up against Tariq to make it believable that she'll like even like this dude so obviously they're gonna put them together but I feel like he's gonna be like a placeholder for Tariq to for her to try to prove to herself like that she can get over him but the feelings are still there and I want Tariq to genuinely choose her not you know, her trying to make him jealous or whatever the case may be. Because it's obvious that him and Effie not going to work out after what Effie did and how Effie been lying to him or whatever. And then when Lauren comes back into play, the fact that he's still doing what he does, you know, for a living, that's still not going to work between them. The obvious choice for me for him to be with is Diana because Diana going to hold him down no matter what. And she loves him and she a down chick. But that's just me. You know what I'm saying? When they finally leaves the house child, because at, by this time, Judge Matthews has been canceled, so she ain't got nothing to watch. <laughs> so if she in the car, and she gets pulled over by Whitman child, who ain't got nothing else to do. And he tells her that he believes that she was the one that unalived Carrie and that Zeke came to him suspecting that she was the one that did it too. And she's shocked that Zeke would do something like that to her. And I low key felt like at that moment, she was kind of like, well, thank God that little Negro did. <laughs> he done betrayed me like that. So, uh, she was like, I ain't do it. I ain't got nothing to do with that. And he was like, well, we got video footage of, uh, you being in that area during that time when she was unalive and he ended up busting one of her windows and i was like um sir you got to pay for that <laughs> like don't be taking your anger out on my window so now monet is kind of like oh god now i gotta deal with this too so she called davis and let davis know that she being harassed by whitman or whatever and he needs to handle that so he then called saxon to the room and was like um i need for you to handle this whitman situation and i need to know what's going on with the rollins case because you know rollins is his brother but i can't remember do saxon know that um theo is his brother or is he still in the dark about that i don't remember y'all let me know down below in the comment section so um sax then calls jenny to ask her do she know um who was surveilling uh what's his dude name mecca's penthouse and she was like nah i don't know lying to him even though she knows that it was whitman and also i figured out who is the ci the ci is sax it's not effie it's sax because remember um, they had already set it up to be investigating Davis to take him down. So that's the person that she already has in play in that group to find out what's going on. It's sex, you guys. So after that, Tariq um, 
is at the gig at the job doing his little internship and he see everybody in that sucker getting lit i mean just on the job coked out everybody in rooms just doing what they do and so later um that night they end up going to a strip club and Braden put him up on game that like look i told you these white boys don't care like they trying to get to it and guess who the supplier it's the physical therapist it's the that's the one you know supplying them and he was like, look, we can get rid of so much weight with these dudes. He was like, but he ain't going to just go easily. Like, we're going to have to figure out a way to get rid of him. And Tyreek was like, bet, I got it. Like, we about to get rid of this dude. So, um, after that, we see Drew walking in the middle of the night. And he get beat up by a GTG gang member who says that he's doing this for Lil Saint. <laughs> This for little sake. No, nah, for little guap or whatever. And then he like tag his back with some spray paint. I'm like, okay, did y'all take this part of the storyline from what happened with Jesse Smollett? <laughs> Who going to beat up somebody on the street corner at night on a busy intersection? beat him up and then spray paint him his back. Like, uh, like there ain't camera footage cameras everywhere like this is literally just a small all over again i was like come on now with this writing we then see brayden link up with tate to pay him off for hiring bruchandria as his intern and not Tariq. so we see he put that whole thing in motion to get Tariq on board to do what he needed him to do manipulating the situation once again but i can't even blame him because Tariq did the same thing to him several times so now he just learning the game Bianca tells Jenny that her bosses don't think that they have enough for a Rico case, but Whitman comes over and gives them more information about Ramirez and how Ramirez was, you know, D and down uh, Monet and tells them to focus their investigation on her because it's not just Tariq this you know, this kingpin, she in on it too as well. So now they see that this Rico case is bigger than they even thought. And they like, oh yeah, we all about to get a raise. <laughs> Drew at the crib after getting beat up and Monet is tending to his wounds and everything. And she was like, you know, go upstairs so I can get this spray paint off your back. So Lorenzo was like, you know, I bet whoever did this to Drew was the same person that, you know, unalive Zeke came. I need for you to go handle that with GTG. Um, and so Kane was like, I right, bet I got it. So he goes to the GTG headquarters, you know, pull out the blicky, unalive some folks. And then the dude that jumped Drew, he actually beat up and, you know, then kidnaps and takes some takes him down to uh the bar or whatever so we then see them down at the bar as him lorenzo and monet and monet was like you sure this the dude that you know unalive zeke and he was like yeah that, that's him or whatever and so the dude was like you know i was paid to jump beat you know beat up drew so monet was like are you sure this the dude that you know unalive zeke and lorenzo was like yeah it gotta be him it gotta be him so monet pow powed him real quick and sent him on to heaven <laughs> or hell whichever one so after that when they're getting rid of the body Kane was like yeah I know you the one that unalive Zeke and at first Lorenzo tried to lie about it until Kane breaks down all the evidence on how he knows that it was him so Lorenzo was like you know it was a it was an accident I was trying to unalive Z uh Mecca or whatever he was trying to you know like take my wife and so at first came play along with him and give him a hug and then he was like dude like I don't mess with you like you a snake and I got you now I'm running this because you can't afford for me to tell Monet so yeah you are about to hit these blocks and get rid of this weight home boy yeah i run this now all right so you know kane is really feeling himself that he got his daddy in his pocket now and that he's holding this big secret over his head but i feel like he's gonna shoot himself in the foot because when monet finds out that he knew and didn't tell her she not gonna trust him neither you know what i'm saying like you gonna further alienate yourself from your mama because you know she already still side-eyeing you from last season so Sax then uh, snoops around Davis' office and finds his burner phone and dials it and 
finds out that he's been talking to Monet on it. So now he looking like, oh, so, you know, he about to run back and get that information to Jenny. And that's going to help Jenny in them case even more against Davis, Monet, Tariq, Braden, and Effie. So, baby. OK. And once again, that shows you that sex is the CI. And that's pretty much the episode, honey. You know, it was a bunch of twists and turns, child. You can barely keep up. But overall, I'm going to give the episode a B minus. It was cute for what it was. You know, I look at power like, you know, just a nighttime soap opera. You know, the writing to me isn't up to par as like a snowfall or something like that. But it's entertaining to watch. Nonetheless, we're invested in these characters because, you know, we've been following this storyline now for almost eight, nine years. So, yeah, it was cute for what it was. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about the episode down below in the comment section. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like and subscribe and hit that notification bell button. I love you guys and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.